Praise the Lord. Amen. Are you asleep? I said, Praise the Lord. Amen. Welcome you to the Bible study tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's close our eyes for prayer. Our Father, we thank you very much for our Bible study tonight. Thank you because of the joy of the Lord and the strength you have given us to be here. We bless your name because of the interest you have given us to study your word. And we pray that the study of the word will benefit us tonight in Jesus' name. We pray that you keep us at a lot and keep us awake so that your word will be understandable to everyone in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. A good amen. amen. Tonight we have a Bible study. We're still in Revelation. And we're in Revelation chapter 6 today. I want to remind you that we have seen the church on earth. And we have seen the beat of the church in heaven. Because at the end of Revelation chapter 3, I told you already that the rapture takes place at that time. Because at the end of Revelation chapter 3, you have the end of the church age. And then in chapter 4, we see the Lord God Almighty, the Ancient of Days, sitting upon the throne of the whole universe. And then he held the book in his hand in chapter 5. Chapter 5, verse 1, And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne, a book written within and on the back side, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to lose the seals thereof. I told you already as we studied that chapter that that book contains the very deeds, titled deeds of the whole earth. Eventually Christ came along, the Lamb of God, the only one that was found worthy in heaven and on earth to open the seven seals scroll and then to break the seals. You have in verse 6, and I beheld and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, that is the living creatures, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb, as if it, as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into the earth. And he came and he took the book out of the, at the right hand of him that sat on the throne. When he did that, all heaven had real joy. And now he began to break the seals. As he breaks his seal, then the scroll is unrolled, and the content therein is revealed to John in vivid dramatic acts. The opening of the scroll, as the seals are opened, reveals the process by which Christ himself will take over the earth from Satan the usurper. In the process, sinners and all the servants of Satan who have corrupted themselves and they have polluted the earth, they are punished severely. We see the opening of the first six seals in chapter six. We have already studied the opening of the five of the first five seals. The first five seals have been broken, and the effects on the inhabitants of the earth had been devastating. As the sixth seal is now broken and the scroll is opened, the wrath of God is poured out in its fury and its fullness. Let me remind you. That when the first seal was opened, what John saw was a false peace on the earth, brought by the Antichrist, the usurper. And when the second seal is broken, what John saw was war, devastation all over the earth. And the third seal will be for farming, which naturally follows war. And then the fourth seal, there will be death and hell following after. After that death, and then there will be pestilences and various uh, troubles, and the sword will kill very many people, and one quarter of the whole world will die. We have studied already the fifth seal. And in that fifth seal, we have found that those who were beheaded, that is, the matters of the great tribulation period, they were telling God in heaven, how long, O oh Lord, 
how true and holy dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth and then we're told that in verse 11 chapter 6 and white robes were given unto every one of them and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season a little while until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled and so we now come to the opening of the sixth seal that you'll find from verse 12 all through to verse 17. Take your Bible and read with me in Revelation chapter 6 verse 12. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal and lo, there was a great earthquake and the sun became black as sackcloth of air. And the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely unripe figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And then it says in verse 14, and the heaven departed as a scroll, that's the skies, when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places, and the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man, hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. And they said unto the mountains and the rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? That's what happened at the time of the, of the sixth seal. Fear and panic took over the hearts of men. And it will prefer death rather than life. Great terrifying effect, events begin on earth. And the highest of men, the strongest of men, the mightiest of men, and the wealthiest of men, together with the poorest of men, and the lowest of men. In fact, it says, with everybody else on earth, will cry out in fear. They express great fear as God moves in his wrath against sinful men on earth during the period of the great tribulation. Everyone will suddenly realize that it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. While they're on earth, they didn't mind all the warning, all the preaching, and the gospel presentation. But now, the time had come for them, that because they had rejected the mercy of God, then mercy was totally withdrawn from them, and judgment and wrath and indignation will come upon the inhabitants of the earth. Then will they suddenly realize that God is not a playboy, that God is not an indulgent God, that is a God of judgment, a God of fury, because it says, vengeance is mine, and I will repay all the people that reject the loving gospel of the Lord, the inhabitants of the earth, who have neglected Christ's warning to fear God, will now go into great fear and panic. Actually, Jesus said in his warning of the people, he said in Luke chapter 12, reading from verse 4, And I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body. And after that, have no more that they can do. But I will forewarn you, whom ye shall fear. Here is the Lord Jesus Christ, who knew the Father very well. Here is the Lord Jesus Christ, who knew the judgment that was to come. And he told the people, I will forewarn you, whom you are to fear. Fear him, which after he has killed, has power to cast into hell. And then he says, yea, yes, truly, verily, I say unto you, fear him. They had neglected that warning and now fear came upon them in fact the bible tells us from the lips of the lord jesus christ that a kind of fear and panic that will come upon the people that the fear will be so terrible that they, are, they, are, they will be fainting in luke chapter 21 reading from verse 25 and verse 26 it says and there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars, and upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, and the sea and the waves running. See the effect in verse 26. Men's heart failing them for fear, and for looking after those things which, shall, which are coming on the earth. 
for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. When Jesus said that, it was still future. At this time that we are studying now, it is still in the future. But when that day will come, after the church is gone in the rapture, and then the people here on earth will be going through the events and the calamities of the great revelation, and the sixth seal is broken by the Lamb of God, the worthy one, then this will happen to them. We're dividing the study today to three parts. Number one, unparalleled manifestations of divine wrath. As you look at these verses, you will see the manifestations of the wrath of God. And these are parallel. It had never happened before like it will happen. And it will never happen again after that time, after he had, it had happened. Number one then, unparalleled, unequal manifestations of divine wrath. Number two, unrepentant men, frightened by divine wrath. You'll think that they will call upon the Lord. And they will seek the face of the Lord. And they will cry unto the Lord for mercy. No, they will rather cry to the mountain to hide them from the face of him that sits upon the throne. Because of the fear that came in them, and the fear will totally paralyze them and cancel faith in them. And then you have point number three. In point number three, he tells us about a mistakable message of divine wrath. They now knew that it was God. Bringing judgment and wrath and indignation upon them. It was an unmistakable message that the Lord had sent to them. You rejected mercy. You rejected love. You rejected salvation. Now I've rejected you. And there is wrath and judgment and calamity coming upon the world. Let's go step after step. Point number one. Unparalleled manifestations of divine wrath. You look at chapter 6 and we look at verse 12 through to verse 14. And I beheld, when he had opened the sixth seal, can I remind you that as the seals were being opened, the contents of the book, of the scroll, was not read out. It was dramatized. And he saw, and he beheld, and he gazed upon those events as the seals were opened. He said, I've been looking at everything. And as we come to the sixth seal, I saw it too, in vivid, practical, demonstrative, dramatic terms. And then he says, and lo, there was a great earthquake. He had seen earthquakes before. And in all the other seals, as you look at the first four, a seals that were broken, and you match that with Matthew chapter 24, there had been earthquakes and pestilences in diverse places. But those were just the beginning of sorrows. But now it's a great earthquake. In the original, it's a great shaking. When continents will be shaken, and countries will be shaken, and the whole earth will be shaken, and that shaking will affect the sun, and the moon, and the mountains, and the islands, and the stars, and everything in the sky, everything in the galaxies. And it says, and the sun became black as sackcloth of air, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell onto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And it says, and the heaven, the sky is departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and every island were moved out of their places. When he said, I beheld, and the sixth seal was broken, and he said, There was a great earthquake. For the great, he says, the reason for this great earthquake, you find in verse 17, they said, For the great day of his wrath has come, and who is able to abide. The days in which we are reading now in the book of Revelation, that is at the time of the great revelation, it's not a time of love, it's not a time of mercy. It's not a period of grace. It is peculiarly a time of the judgment of God. And the people realize for the great day of his wrath is come. All the first five terrible events following the opening of the first five seals involved human and satanic agents. As you look at the first seal, and you see the Antichrist and the beast marching all over the earth, all over the universe. And they are saying, we are going to give you peace. And everything is going to be alright. You'll see Satan's agents involved there. And you'll see human governments involved there. As you see the second seal, and you see war. And a great sword was given. And they began to kill one another. You will see that the terrible judgments of the second seal, you'll see that human beings were involved in killing one another. And then as you see the third seal, and you have the scale 
the balances and they were weighing the food to give to them, which is talking about the farming. Again, human beings and satanic agents, they are involved. I about the first seal, when death followed and pestilences. Then when many people were dying, you'll see the anger of Satan, the fury of Satan, as well as the agencies of Satan and human beings in this particular seal now. The, the sixth seal, this is just the fury of God Almighty. God comes out in power and he comes out in authority and it is God alone that is acting here. Who caused the great earthquake? And who is going to cause the moon to be turned into blood? And who is going to cause the blackness of the sackcloth to come upon the sun? And who is going to make the skies to roll away like you fold clothes and you throw it away? Who is going to cause all the mountains and all the islands to move out of their places? It is God. God's power. God's authority, God's wrath, God's indignation, God's anger upon the people that have rejected the Lord Jesus Christ here on earth. By the time of the opening of this sixth seal, the great tribulation will already be in the second half. That means in the last three and a half years, then God's wrath comes without any mercy upon those who accept and follow the Antichrist. The unbelieving world with the nominal church worldwide and the religious world. When I say the religious world, there are many religions in the world apart from the religion of the nominal church goers. All those other religious people in the world, they will experience the great tribulation and it will bring great suffering and frightening sights that will never have occurred before that time. There will be six frightening features in the pouring of the divine wrath on the world as a sixth seal is open. Look at them. Number one, there's a great earthquake. Number two, the sun is becoming black as sackcloth of air. Number three, the moon becomes like blood, red like blood. And then number four, the stars of heaven falling on the earth. Number five, the skies, that is the heaven departing as a scroll. When it is rolled away, rolled together. And then number six, every mountain, every island moving out of their places. As you look at chapter six and verse 12. It says, and I beheld, when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake. He qualifies with an adjective, the earthquake. And it says, it's a great earthquake. It's a terrible earthquake. A earthquake. It's a kind of earthquake that shakes everything. Not just a locality, but shakes the whole earth. And even shakes everything connected with the earth. The sun and the moon and the mountains and the islands. There had been some earthquakes in the first half of the great tribulation referred to by Christ as the beginning of sorrows or the beginning of birth pains that you will find in Matthew chapter 24 verses 4 to 8. The great earthquake of this seal now, the sixth seal, will be a great shaking of the earth. Greater than all that ever shook this earth. The shaking will affect everything in the universe. It will affect the sun, affect the moon affect the stars, affect the stars uh, the, the sky, affect the mountains and the islands look at Isaiah chapter 29 and see what kind of shaking will come upon the earth at such a time in Isaiah chapter 29 reading from verse 6 Isaiah chapter 29 verse 6 thou shalt be visited of the Lord of hosts with thunder and with earthquake and great noise and with storm and tempest and the flame of devouring fire. Uh, you know, it's talking about the time of judgment, the time of destruction, the time of devastation, the time of wastage, and a time when many lives will be wasted and many lives will be lost at the time of the great tribulation in Haggai chapter 2. Haggai chapter 2, reading from verse 6 and verse 7. Haggai chapter 2, I'm reading to you from verse 6 and the first part of verse 7. You'll see that it's talking about the earthquake, it's talking about the shaking. In chapter 2 verse 6, it says, For thus says the Lord of hosts, yet once, it's a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land. Do you see the shaking here? It affects the heavens, affects the earth affects the sea and affects the dry land and then it says i will shake all nations that is the great earthquake that will take place at the time of the great tribulation at the breaking of the sixth seal will not just affect a locality 
or just a continent or just a small portion of the earth is going to take a shaking that will shake all the nations and it will be previous it will be preceding the coming of the lord jesus christ because it says and the desire of all nations shall come and i will fill this house with glory says the lord of hosts as we look at the events that will be taking place let's look at this uh, just uh, carefully in isaiah chapter 13 isaiah chapter 13 when that shaking begins to take place when the devastation begins to take place all over the earth at that time isaiah chapter 13 reading from verse 6 how ye for the day of the lord is at hand it shall come as a destruction from the almighty the day of his wrath. That's the testimony of those people when they were in panic and in fear and terror. And they said, For the great day of his wrath has come, and who can abide, who can stand before him? Here he tells us that it shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. And then he tells us in verse 9 Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, cruel both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it you see then that the great tribulation is aimed is targeted at the unbelievers is targeted at the christ rejecters is targeted at the people that have rejected the gospel of mercy they have rejected the gospel of love they have rejected the gospel of grace and then it says devastation and destruction and perdition will come upon the sinners thereof it says in verse 10 for the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light the sun shall be dark it is going forth and the moon shall not cause a light to shine exactly what we have read in revelation chapter 6 verses 12 through to 14 that the shaking the earthquake will affect the sun and the moon and the light here in this world and i will punish the world in verse 11 for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity and i will cause the arrogancy of the of the proud to cease and lay and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible isn't that what we have read in revelation chapter 6 as the mighty men and the great men and the wealthy men and the chief captains and the honorable men and the free men and the bond men as they ran to the mountains saying fall on us and hide us from the wrath of him that sits upon the throne and hide us from the wrath of the lamb that's what it says here in chapter 13 of isaiah in verse 11 when he said i will cause the arrogancy and the haughtiness and the pride of the proud to come to an end and i will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible i will make a man more precious in verse 12 than fine gold even a man than the golden wedge of offer and then it says in verse 13 therefore i will shake the heavens and i will shake the earth and the earth shall shall remove out of her place in the wrath of the lord of hosts in the day of his fierce anger that's describing the time of the great tribulation and it wasn't only in this place that isaiah mentioned that look at isaiah chapter 34 isaiah chapter 34 reading from verse 4 it tells us there and it says and all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved that is all the stars and all the all those things that you see in the sky everything will be dissolved and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll and all their hosts shall fall shall fall down as a leaf falleth off from the vine and as a falling fig from the fig tree exactly what we have read in revelation and what christ has confirmed is what had been given or revealed to the prophets even before christ came this is isaiah telling us that the time of tribulation is coming great tribulation and it's a time of destruction it's a time of devastation upon the people of the earth in verse 8 of that same chapter for it is the day of the lord's vengeance and the year of recompenses for the controversy of zion as Isa wrote about it, Jeremiah also wrote about it. In fact, Jeremiah says that when that thing begins to happen, it will look as if the earth is completely desolate. Look at Jeremiah chapter 4, reading from verse 23. Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 23. I beheld the earth, and lo, it was without form and void, and the heavens and day that and they had no light. It affects the moon, it affects the sun, it affects the stars, and darkness comes upon every inhabitant 
inhabitant of the earth and it says all those people there is no light I beheld the mountains and low they trembled and all the hills moved lightly hey, what he's saying is that the, the hills they moved as if you are moving a light material that you can just carry that the wind can just blow away it says at that time when that devastation the destruction when the shaking begins to happen in all the continents and all the countries and all the nations and all the world it says that the hills will be moving lightly as if they were just uh, something of no weight in verse 25 i beheld and lo and there was no man and all the birds of heaven were fled i beheld and lo the fruitful place was a wilderness and all the cities thereof were broken down at the presence of the Lord and by his fierce anger. For thus, as the Lord said, the whole land shall be desolate, yet will I not make a full end. You understand that the sixth seal is not the end. The seventh seal is still going to come. And the seven trumpets are still going to be blown. And the seven veils are still going to be poured upon the earth. So he's telling us that the sixth seal is not the end of everything. That's why it says the whole land shall be desolate. And yet will I not make a full end. It continues in verse 28. For they shall the earth mourn. And the heavens are both be black. Because I have spoken it. I have purposed it and will not repent. I will not change my mind Neither will I turn back from it The whole city shall flee For the noise of the horsemen and the bowmen They shall go into the thicket And climb up upon the rocks Every city shall be forsaken And not a man dwell therein That's the time of the coming judgment The devastation that is going to come Upon the earth as Isaiah wrote about it, Jeremiah wrote about it, Ezekiel also wrote about it. In Ezekiel chapter 32, Ezekiel chapter 32, we're reading there from verse 7, Ezekiel 32, verses 7, 8, and 9. And when I shall put thee out, I will cover the heaven and make the stars thereof dark. I will cover the sun with a cloud, and the moon shall not give her light. Can you see the unity and the uniformity of Scripture? Can you see that the same thing that Christ is saying and Christ is revealing in the book of Revelation, the same thing Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Joel, others have revealed as well. In verse 8 it says, and the, and the bright lights of heaven will I make dark over thee. That means the stars, the bright lights of heaven will I make dark over thee and set darkness upon thy land, says the Lord God. And I will also vex, I will trouble, I will torment the hearts of many people. People, when I shall bring thy destruction among the nations into the countries which thou hast not known. That is, even the countries that the people of Israel did not know. The many countries that appear that, uh, that are there today, that exist today, that the Lord will bring the judgment upon all those places. Look at Joel. In Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2, Joel also prophesied about these things. And in Joel chapter 2, reading from verse 10, there shall quake. That's a great earthquake. That Revelation chapter 6 is speaking about. There shall quake before them. The heavens shall tremble. And the sun and the moon shall be dark. And the stars shall withdraw their shining. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army. And his camp is very great for his strong that executed his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible and who can abide it? Who can abide it? The day of the Lord is very terrible. The day of the Lord will bring terrible devastation upon the whole earth. And it says, who will be able to abide at such a time? What's the effect of the sun as on the sun and on the moon and on the galaxies as Joel recorded in verse 30 of that same chapter? And I will show wonders in the heavens. And in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. And the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and the terrible day of the Lord come. 
All those Old Testament references are speaking about the time of the great tribulation. When the destruction will come as a result of the wrath of God being poured upon the people of the world. But you know that in the New Testament it is the same thing. Because Jesus Christ spoke about the time of the great tribulation. And he spoke about that time in these very descriptive terms that we have read in Revelation. That we have read in the Old Testament prophets too. In Matthew chapter 24. Reading from verse 21. Matthew chapter 24 verse 21. For then shall be great tribulation. Such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. Here the Lord Jesus Christ revealed that the kind of tribulation, the kind of torment, and the kind of trouble, and the kind of wrath, and the kind of judgment that will be poured upon the earth will be something that had never, never happened upon the face of the earth. In fact, he tells us in verse 22, he said, And except those days shall be shortened. What does that mean? You know that in the world, in the history of the world, well, there are some wars that have continued for several years, 10 years, 15 years, many, many years in different countries. But it says that the devastation will be so terrible that except those days shall be shortened, shortened to just a period of seven years. The time of the great tribulation, except it, it had been a limited time, a limited period, and the days were shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect say, because of the children of Israel, those days shall be shortened. In verse 29, immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened. And the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Remember once again, earthquake is a shaking of the earth. And that's what Jesus Christ was speaking about in answering the question of the disciples. In Matthew chapter 21, Matthew chapter 21. I'm reading to you from verse 22, 21, 22. For these be the days of vengeance, not the days of mercy, not the days of love. Not the days when God will just overlook all that men have done. But it's the time of vengeance that all things which are written may be fulfilled. What does that mean? All the things who are written in Isaiah that they may be fulfilled. All the things who have read in Jeremiah, in Ezekiel, in Joel, in Nahum, in Haggai, in all the other prophets. That all the things which are written may be fulfilled. All the things that have been recorded concerning the time of the great revelation. The time is coming when those things are going to be fulfilled. In fact, it says that it will be so terrible upon the people of the earth that were told in verse 25, and there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations. Not just one nation, many, many nations. Anybody on the earth at that time will suffer terribly. And it says with perplexity and the sea and the waves roaring. What's the effect on men and women and children and boys and girls? Everybody on the earth at that time, in verse 26, men's heart failing them for fear. Men, men's hearts failing them for fear. There'll be terrible panic. In fact, there are some people that their hearts will just stop dead because of the terrible panic and the terrible fear. You think about it. If the earth begins to shake and the eruption of the volcanoes begin to, to come up, and then it clouds the sky. And then you find the stars falling. And those are great balls of fire falling upon the earth. And people with excruciating pain, they are dying under terrible, terrible, terrible agony. Men start to be feeling them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Well, if those things are so, and those things are going to be so, what's going to be the, uh, what's going to be the way of escape? That is, when those things begin to happen, what can be the way of escape so that you will not go through those things? I'm asking you, where will you be when the sixth trumpet sounds and a great earthquake comes upon the earth? And then the sun and the moon, they become darkened. And then you find the stars falling. Where you, will you be at that time? When wicked men is rush shall see. Tell me, where will you be? And when to the rocks they shall flee, where will you be? When heaven and earth as some great scroll shall from God's angry presence roll, where will you be? When the hills and the mountains shall flee away, and when all the works of men shall decay, where will you be? When the east and the west, the fire shall roll, 
How will it be with your poor soul at that time? Where will you be? What's the way of escape? How can you escape from this devastating judgment that is to come? That's why Second Peter is given to you and given to me so that we'll be able to find a way of escape in second peter chapter 3 verse 10 but the day of the lord will come as a thief in the night in the which the heaven shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burnt up seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness you must be born again because if you are not born again if the rapture takes place and you're still in your sin you'll be left here on the earth and you will go through these devastating terrible uh, judgments coming upon the earth seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved when the earth and the elements will be dissolved when the works of men shall decay and when fire will burn every sin upon the earth what manner of persons what kind of person ought you to be in all holy conversation and godliness looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat nevertheless we the believers nevertheless the saved and the sanctified nevertheless we the holy children of God nevertheless we who have got the grace of God and our lights are shining and we're living according to the commandments of the Lord nevertheless we the gracious people the people that have the fruit of the spirit in their lives nevertheless we according to his promise look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness wherefore beloved seeing that she look for such things be diligent don't be lazy don't be idle and don't be careless with your salvation with your soul be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless i pray that when that day comes you would have been with the lord before it comes in revelation chapter 6 we're looking at verses 15 and 16 we're going to point number two on repentant sinners frightened by divine wrath revelation chapter 6 verse 15 and the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains and he said to the mountains and to the rocks fall on us and hide us from the face of him that seated on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb they didn't repent but they were frightened by divine wrath by the things that they saw the terrifying events will produce universal consternation among all classes of people and it will fill the world with terror and with alarm do you see there are seven kinds of people seven uh, seven uh, people that are mentioned there number one the kings those are the rulers occupying earthly thrones and then it mentions number two the great men those are men high men of high office or in in the state in every state in every country and then it mentions number three and rich men wealthy men all those things that they have high ranking office or position in any country or rulership or whatever will not find security or protection for them from the fear and the alarm that will come upon the men living on the face of the earth number four it mentions the chief captains those are commanders of armies but they will tremble when god appears in judgment number five it mentions the mighty men men of might men of power men of prowess they will have no power or means to withstand god or stand in the day of his wrath and then after that it says and every bondman that is the slaves and the servants and then every free man that is the masters and all the free independent people they will be filled with dread and with alarm it's telling us that at that time at the blowing at the at the sounding of the trumpet or at the opening of the sixth seal it's telling us that the high and the low and the, the great and the small the elite of the world and the illiterates in the world the common people will feel the fury of god's wrath and will be scared to death they will try to find refuge in the rocks of the mountains but every mountain and every island will, will become affected and it will start moving out of their place. Where will the sinner hide from the wrath to come? 
The Lord is telling us that if we want to find any hiding place, this is the time to find a hiding place. Look at chapter 9. You'll find that these men, although they were frightened, they will not repent. They will hold on to their sins and they will think that eventually it will be over. And yet it will not be over. They will go from there through death unto hell fire. Look at the attitude in Revelation chapter 9 verses 20 and 21. It doesn't it surprise you that many people can go through such a heart, uh, an earthquake and such devastating judgment and the wrath of God. And they will realize it is the wrath of God because they themselves were cried out. They will cry out in terror and in fear and in panic. The great day of his wrath is come. And yet, instead of turning to the Lord for mercy, they'll be running away from the Lord, wanting to hide in the mountains. Look at this, Revelation chapter 9, verse 20, and the rest of the men, which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands. Yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils, and idols of gold, and silver, and brass, and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. That those people, they see the mountains moving, and they see the rocks being shattered, and they see all those stones that they, they are worshipping, and all the trees being uprooted, and yet they'll keep on worshipping all those dead idols that cannot see, that cannot hear, that cannot walk. Neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. They will continue in all the evil things they were doing. And yet the judgment will be going on and on. Unrepentant men frightened by divine wrath. In Revelation chapter 16. Revelation chapter 16. I'm reading to you from verse 18. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings. And there was a great earthquake such as was not since men were upon the earth so mighty an earthquake and so great and the great city was divided into three parts and the cities of the nations fell and great babylon came in remembrance before god to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath and every island fled away and the mountains were not found and there fell upon men great hail out of heaven and every stone about the weight of a talent and men blasphemed God instead of repenting they blasphemed God they insulted God they abused God they, they swore against God because of the plague of the hail for the plague thereof was exceedingly great you see instead of repenting they will still be fighting against God is, doesn't that even happen sometimes today? You find that some people go to prison because of the evil they have done. And they suffer for so many years because of what they have done. And after they come back from prison, what do they do again? They go back into the same crime. And doesn't that happen to backsliders? A person backslides. And then he suffers as a result of the backsliding. The judgment of God coming upon him. So that the judgment of God will lead him to repentance. And many of the backsliders, instead of repenting, under the devastating judgment of God, what do they do? They are hardened in their sin. They are hardened in their backsliding. The more they are punished, and the more the terror of God and the judgment of God is upon them, the more they continue in their evil deeds. They showing you that the nature of the people today will just continue. In fact, he says that evil men will become worse and worse. Instead of the judgment softening them and making them to repent, the judgment will harden them and make them to continue in their evil. In Isaiah chapter 24, verse 17, fear and the pit and the snare are upon the O inhabitants of the earth. That is, all those who are living on the earth at that time. Because at this time now the church is gone. At this time now, the mercy of God is not like it was during the church age. At this time now, it's the time of the judgment of God. And it says, O inhabitants of the earth, snares and the pit and fear and devastation are upon thee. In verse 18, and it shall come to pass that he that fl who fleeth from the noise of fear shall fall into the pit. And he that cometh out of the midst of the pit shall be taken in the snare. For the windows from on high are open open and the foundations of the earth do shake then it continues in verse 19 it says the earth is utterly broken down the earth is clean dissolved and the the earth is moved exceedingly the earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard and shall be removed like a cottage and the 
transgression thereof shall be heavy upon it, and it shall fall and not rise again. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall punish the host of the high ones that are on high, and the kings of the earth upon the earth. Exactly what we have read in the Revelation. That judgment will come upon the kings, upon the great men, upon the rich men, upon the chief captains, upon the mighty men, and every bondman and every free man. In verse uh, 22 it says, And they shall be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in the pit, and shall be shut up in the prison. After many days shall they be visited. Then the moon shall be confounded, and the sun ashamed. When the Lord of hosts shall reign in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem before his ancients gloriously. That is, the judgment will come upon everyone. And already you have seen in the book of Revelation that it affects everyone, the high and the low, the proud and uh, the, the people that are just uh, living lives that are not to the glory of God. In Isaiah chapter 2, Isaiah chapter 2, in verse 10, enter into the rock. Hide thee in the doors for, the, for fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty. The lofty looks of man, those who are proud, those who are arrogant, the lofty, uh, the lofty looks of man shall be humbled and the haughtiness of men shall be bowed down and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. And that's the time when judgment will come and it will not spare the high ones. It will not, it will not spare the chiefs. It will not spare the kings and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains. It will come upon everyone. For the day of the Lord of hosts shall be upon everyone that is proud and lofty. Upon everyone that is lifted up and he shall be brought low. Uh, when they begin to run to the rocks and to the mountains and the same fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sits upon the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. Don't you see then that the great men and the lofty they are brought so low. It says in verse 13, and upon all the cedars of Lebanon, those, that is, those who are tall, the, 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 the trees, the cedars, those are the trees that are higher than all the other trees. It's using a kind of pictorial language for the highly placed people of the earth that are high and lifted up and upon all the oaks of Bashan, and upon all the high mountains and upon all the hills that are lifted up and upon every high tower and upon every fenced wall and upon all the ships of Tarshish and upon all the pleasant pictures and the loftiness of man shall be bowed down and the haughtiness of men shall be made low and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. If you are proud today, and you, you, you are being told about getting saved. You say, no, I don't need that. You are told about humbling yourself, repenting before the Lord. No, I cannot do that. Don't you know my position? Don't you know my riches? Don't you know who I am? Don't you know my title, my office? That day is coming. When the judgment of God will come upon the men of this world. And the loftiness of men shall be brought low. In fact, it says in verse 18. And the idols he shall utterly abolish. And they shall go into the holes of the rocks and into the caves of the earth for the fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty. When he rises to shake terribly the earth, in that day a man shall cast his idols of silver and his idols of gold, which they have made each one from himself to worship to the moles and to the bars to go into the clefts of the rocks and into the tops of the ragged rocks for the fear for fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty when he rises to shake terribly the earth that's why it's saying if you are depending upon those kings and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men today it says why are you depending upon them why are you looking up to them as if they are gods why are you making them to replace Christ and re replace salvation in your life? That's why it says in verse 22, they'll be brought loose. Cease ye from man whose breath is in his nostrils. There was nothing. When the judgment of God begins to fall on those kings and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men, then you will see that they are totally worthless and they're less than the dust of the earth. Cease ye from man whose breath is in his nostrils for wherein is he to be accounted of. When the judgment comes will be surprised what will be happening unto them and that's why the Lord Jesus Christ was telling the people of Jerusalem at the time of his uh, trial in Luke chapter 23 Luke chapter 23 reading from verse 27 Luke 
chapter 23, reading from verse 27. It says, Jesus, uh, it says, and there followed him a great company of people and of women, which also bewailed. They were crying and they lamented him. But Jesus turning unto them said, daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. The generations to come that will go through the great tribulation, they are the people you'll be weeping for. If you know what will be happening to the people of Israel and to the inhabitants of the earth at the breaking of the first and second and third and fourth seal, and at the breaking of the sixth seal, you'll not be crying for me at all. I'm in the will of God. I'm going to the cross. I'm going to die for the salvation of the people that will believe. You should be weeping for the people that are not believing. Your children, your descendants that are going to reject the gospel. In verse 20, for behold the days are coming in the which they shall say blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bear and the palms which never give suck then shall they begin to say to the mountains fall on us and to the hills cover us so then you see that judgment will come upon the people of this world at the breaking of the sixth seal already we have read it the prophets of the old testament and we have read it from the words of the lord jesus christ how they all prophesy that such a time will come in the future when God's vengeance is will be poured out his wrath will be poured out to punish the inhabitants of the earth all hearts will melt and collapse under his unbearable judgment before I leave that point to you I want you to go back to Revelation chapter 6 Revelation chapter 6 I'm reading to you there from verse 16 Revelation chapter 6 I'm reading from verse 16 and said unto the mountains and the rocks fall on us and hide us hide us from the face of him that seated on the throne and from the rods of the lamb that is they want a hiding place a hiding place from the wrath of God the judgment of God do you know that today you can find a hiding place in the Lord Jesus Christ because if you reject the rock of ages now then you'll be looking for the rocks at that time to hide you away from the from the judgment of God but at that time it will not avail it is today that you can have the mercy of God and you can go to the altar and kneel down in humility and with tears of repentance and say rock of ages clear for me let me hide myself in thee he is the hiding place. Let the water and the blood from thy wounded side with flood be of sin the double cure. Save from wrath and make me pure. Now you know at that time they'll be running and they want to hide from the face of the Lord. This is the time you can hide. Do you remember that song, Jesus, lover of my soul? Let me to thy bosom fly. While the nearer waters roll, while the tempest chill is high, Hide me, O oh my Savior, hide till the storm of life is past. Save into the heaven guide, O oh, receive my soul at last. If you're going to hide, it's in the rock of ages, it's in the Lord, in the Lord Jesus Christ that you can hide today. There is no other refuge, other refuge have I none. Hangs my helpless soul on thee. Leave, ah, leave me not alone. Still support and comfort me. All my trust on thee is stayed. All my hell from thee I bring. Cover my defenseless head with the shadow of thy wing. It's today you can hide in the Lord. And if you come to the Lord today and you want to hide under the blood of Jesus, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. It will hide your soul. A wonderful Savior is Jesus my Lord. A wonderful Savior is see to me. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock where rivers of pleasure I see. He hideth my soul in the de in the cleft of the rock that shadows a dry and thirsty land. He hideth my life in the depths of his love and he covers me there with his hand. Yes, he covers me there with his hands. It's today you can come for that covering. It's today you can come for that hiding because in Jesus Christ you have a hiding place. Look at uh, uh, and the Psalms in Psalm 17. In Psalm 17. Giving you the promise and giving you the assurance that 
if you will come to the Lord, you will, you will be hidden today from the judgment of the Lord. In Psalm 17, verses 7 and 8, show me thy marvelous loving kindness, O thou that savest by thy right hand, them that put their trust in thee, from those that try up against them. Keep me as the apple of the eye. Hide me under the shadow of thy wings. Instead of waiting for the time of judgment, instead of waiting for the time of the great tribulation, when you'll be running to the rocks and there'll be no covering, and there'll be no refuge, and there'll be no hiding place, why don't you come to the Lord Jesus Christ today and say, Hide me from the judgment and the wrath that is to come in Psalm 27? Psalm 27, reading from verse 4, it says, One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For, for in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. You see, the redeemed of the Lord, they, they will be raptured before this great tribulation and will be hidden in the pavilion of the Lord while the tribulation and the wrath of God is being poured out upon the world here below. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock. That's why the Lord is calling upon you. Isaiah chapter 26. Isaiah chapter 26 is telling you that you can come to the Lord Jesus Christ today. You repent of your sin. You forsake your sin. You turn away from your sin. And you come to the Lord Jesus Christ. And you hide under the grace and the mercy and the love and the sheltering arms. And a shadow of the wings of the Lord. In Isaiah chapter 26 reading from verse 20. Come my people enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy I doors about thee, hide thyself. Hide thyself. Mercy is still available. Hide thyself. The blood of Jesus can cleanse and cover all your sins. Hide thyself. The Lord can forgive you today if you will not continue in your hardness of heart, in your sin, in your rigidity, saying that I will do what I want to do. The judgment of God is there. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? Hide thyself. I sit one for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity the earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain we're told in revelation chapter 6 revelation chapter 6 that the people eventually they will realize that this is the wrath of god in revelation chapter 6 verses 16 and 17 and said to the mountains and to the rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that seated on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. A mistakable message of divine wrath. They eventually realized this is the hand of God. They eventually realized this is the judgment of God. This is the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath has come. And who shall be able to stand? You see, when God rises up to judge, there are times that people will recognize this is God. This is not accidental. And there are some times that when God is bringing judgment upon some people, they'll square their shoulders, they shake themselves, they say, no, no, it's not the judgment of God. It's accidental. It just happened like that. There are many people today, they have not seen the handwriting on the wall. They have not seen the judgment of God upon their lives. They are backsliding. Something terrible is happening to them and they squat their shoulders and they shake their heads and they stand up upright and they say, no, it's accidental. It happens to everybody. It happens once in a while like that. No, my dear friend, it is the judgment of God. When are you going to wake up? And know that what is happening to you is not accidental. The Lord is putting that weep on you. He's putting that judgment on you. He's pouring out that wrath in a limited way now on you. So that you will realize this is the hand of God. Look at the prodigal son. When he went into a far country. And then he came to want. And judgment came. And devastation came. He lost everything. Then he came to himself. What's happening to me? Why am I here? 
Why am I suffering here? The hired servants of my father, they have enough to eat and to spare. And I'm perishing with hunger here. It is because I left home. It's because of my disobedience. It's because of my backsliding. I will arise and go to my father. And I will say unto my father, Father, I've sinned against heaven and against you. I'm not worthy to be called your son. Make me one of your hired servants. And then he arose and he came. And while he was still a great way off, his father saw him and ran and then embraced him and kissed him. And then when he began to say, my father, I know I've sinned. I'm not worthy to be your son. Uh, the father brushed aside all that and forgave him. If you will realize that what is happening to you today is the judgment of God. It's the wrath of God in a limited way so that he can call you back like the prodigal son. That would be a wonderful thing. You know, the children of Israel, they were in Egypt. And eventually when Moses said unto Pharaoh, let my people go. And Pharaoh said, who is that God? I do not know that God. Plagues came upon plagues. Judgment came upon judgment, wrath upon wrath. The anger, the indignation of God came upon them. Eventually, they released them. And eventually, they were now at the Red Sea. And while they departed the, the Red Sea and they were going, the Egyptians followed after them. Look at the rest of the story yourself in Exodus chapter 14. Exodus chapter 14, reading from verse 24. And it came to pass that in the morning watch, the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians and through the pillar of fire and of the cloud and troubled the host of, of the Egyptians. It's not accidental, my friend. It's the trouble. It's the trial. It's the tribulation. It's the judgment of God upon these Egyptians. And then took off the chariot wheels that they drove them heavily so that the Egyptians said, let us flee from the face of Israel for the Lord fighteth for them against the Egyptians. They recognized this the unmistakable message of the wrath of God, of the judgment of God. They knew it was the judgment of God. My dear friend, you, you've married and you know the immorality that you are committing before the marriage. And we asked you, did you do anything wrong? No, sir. Everything was all right. We lived a pure life, a righteous. You know you are telling a lie. And now that you are married, you cannot sleep. Now that you are married, all things are working around in your body. Now that you are married, the evil personality that left you before you were, that after you were born again, the evil personality has come back now. There is no child, there is no pregnancy, there is nothing. And you are suffering, suffering in silence and you are telling your husband, my husband, is it not because of what we have done? Why don't we confess? Make restitution. Make right our lives. Uh -uh. It is accidental. I about brother so-and-so. I about sister so-and-so. Have they gotten any child yet? Don't, don't worry about that. If we go to report now, then they will stop us. They will stop you for maybe a period of time, but you will settle your life and you'll get ready for heaven. And you're just saying it is accidental. It is not accidental. When you have gone to join a trade with a business with the unbelievers and everything is collapsing and you're saying, I will try again. I'll buck up again. Everything will be all right. It is accidental. It is not accidental. They understood this is the judgment of God upon them. Are you going to be worse than the unbelievers? The Egyptians recognize it is the hand of God. It is the, it is the wrath of the almighty God against the Egyptians. Do you realize? Don't you realize? In 1 Samuel chapter 6. 1 Samuel chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 19 and 20. And he smote the men of, of Be Beshemesh because they had looked into the ark of the Lord. Even he smote of the people 50,000 and three score and ten men. Think about that. 50,000 people died. And uh, the people lamented because the Lord had smitten many of the people with a great slaughter. And the men of Beshemesh said, Who is able to stand before this holy Lord God? And to whom shall he go up from us? They realized it was the judgment of God. Have you realized yet? Have you realized yet? When you stole God's money and then you put that along with the money that, you know, was all right, that you gained from business. And now your real money and God's money that you stole, everything is gone. Your business is collapsing. And now you are living in poverty. And you are still saying, well, I think it's accidental. It happens like that. It's because of the economy of the day. It's not the economy of the day. It's the judgment of God. In Romans chapter 2, 
Romans chapter 2, the unmistakable message of divine wrath. Why don't you come to understand that this is the judgment of God and the Lord is leading you to repentance because of the judgment is bringing upon you. Romans chapter 2 verse 3. And thinkest thou this, O man, that judgest them which do such things and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance, but after thy hardness and impenitent heart, treasurest up unto thyself, wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to every man according to his deeds. So then the Lord is calling you, saying, why don't you repent and call upon the Lord? If you will call upon the Lord, then mercy will come from the throne of grace, because this is still the time of grace. When the love of God, when the God of love rises up to judge those who have rejected his love, when the lamb whose meekness and grace and salvation has been rejected when he rises up in wrath there will be no mistake in the interpretation of the events of that day that day of wrath all classes of men on the earth will confess that it is the wrath of the lamb they will know that the catastrophes that are natural are not natural disasters but that they are the great it is a great day of his wrath that has come the question on their lips will be and who shall be able to stand all who dread the impending terrors will be aware of, this, of the source of that terror. Everyone will have enough knowledge to understand by whom these terrors are afflicted. These threatening judgments will be very severe, so severe and awful, that they will cause dread and fear in all hearts. The wrath of the Lamb will be exceedingly dreadful. And if the Redeemer, think about it, the Redeemer, the Lord, the God of love himself, Jesus Christ, the one who died on the cross of Calvary because of his love. When we were yet without sin, he died for us. If this Redeemer, who today appeases the wrath of God and is wanting to reconcile you with God, if he himself, on that day of the breaking of the sixth seal, be the wrathful enemy who will plead for the world on that day of his wrath, Unrepentant sinners will perish without remedy. The Lord is warning you today. And he that has been often reproved, hardness his neck, shall perish that without remedy. Let me ask you, how many times have you heard the message of the love of God? And the message of the, of the grace of God? And the message of the salvation of the Lord? Saying, today is the day. You can come to the Lord today. And you have rejected and rejected. Soul winners have prayed to you. Evangelists have prayed to you. The pastor has spoken to you. Preachers have spoken to you. Everybody has pleaded with you why don't you repent why don't you come upon a uh, call to the lord but you say no i don't want to come to the lord i don't have time for that now i want to do this and do this and do that the wrath will come the judgment will come and when that judgment come comes there will be nobody to deliver you that's why the lord is calling you today the word of god assures us that that judgment will come you've read it over and over and over can you miss that look at isaiah chapter 13 in isaiah chapter 13 i'm reading to you from verse 6 how ye for the day of the lord is at hand it's not far away. The judgment of God. In fact, we are told in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. When they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction shall come upon them. While you are still saying, well, there is no problem. The rapture is not going to take place like that. And I can still do whatever I want. I can still continue in sin and in backsliding. And there is no danger at all. While they are saying peace and safety, sudden destruction will come upon them. And in these verse 6, it shall come as a destruction for the almighty therefore shall all hands be faint and every heart every man's heart shall melt and they shall be afraid and pangs and sorrow shall take hold of them they shall be in pain as a woman that travaileth they shall be amazed one at another and their faces shall gather shall be as flames behold the day of the lord cometh cruel both with wrath and fierce anger to lay the land desolate and it shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it and while the mercy of god is still available today why don't you call upon the lord in Zephaniah chapter one 
Zephaniah chapter 1. And the Lord is telling us that judgment will come, devastation will come upon the people of the land. And if you don't want to be among them, there should be your chance to repent, to call upon the Lord. In Zephaniah chapter 1, reading from verse 14, it says, The great day of the Lord is near, it is near, and hastes greatly. Even the voice of the day of the Lord, the mighty man shall cry there bitterly. That is the people that are hiding today. And the people that are saying, I'm mighty, I'm strong, and nothing will shake me. You can talk about indignation and wrath, about judgment, about the great tribulation. It will not shake me at all. But at that time, the mighty man shall cry, and he shall cry bitterly. That day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of wastage, a day of wasteness and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of the trumpet and of alarm against the fenced cities and against the high towers. And he says, and I will bring distress upon the men that they shall walk like blind men because they have sinned against the Lord. Do you see that? It's because of sin. It's because of hardness of heart. It's because of backsliding. Because they have sinned against the Lord. And it says, and their blood shall be poured out as doors, and their flesh as the dung. Neither shall their silver nor their gold shall be, neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath. But the whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy. For he shall make even a speedy riddance of all them that dwell in the land. We're told in Psalm 76, Psalm 76, the Lord is telling us that if we don't repent, if we don't call upon the Lord, here is a time of judgment that is going to come upon the earth. Psalm 76, I'm reading to you from verse 7. Thou, even thou, art to be feared, and who may stand in thy sight when once thou art angry? It says, thou didst cause judgment to be heard from heaven, and the earth feared and was still. Fear is going to come upon the inhabitants of the earth. And look at Joel chapter 2. And in all these references, what the Lord is wanting us to do is to consider our ways and to make sure that the salvation of the Lord becomes ours, that we possess the grace of God and the goodness of God in our lives so that the love of God today can cover our sins and the grace of God can give us forgiveness and the blood of Jesus can wash away, can wash us whiter than snow and wash away our sins. In Joel chapter 2 from verse 1, blow ye the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of the Lord cometh for it is near at, at, at hand. A day of darkness and of gloominess. A day of clouds and of thick darkness as the morning spread upon the mountains. A great people and a strong and there has not been ever the like. Neither shall be be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. In verse 11, the Lord shall utter his voice before his army. For his camp is very great, for he is strong that executeth his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible, and who can abide it? Any remedy? What can you do today? How can you avoid going through this great tribulation? It tells you in verse 12, therefore. Also now, says the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart, and with fasting, and with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your heart, tear your heart apart, sort yourself in righteousness, break up your fallow ground, seek the Lord in righteousness. It says you should turn unto me with all your heart, and then it says rend your heart and not your garments, and turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious, today he is gracious. But that day it will be a day of his wrath. And merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness. And repenteth him of the evil. Who knoweth if he will turn and repent and leave a blessing behind him, even a meat offering and a drink offering unto the Lord your God. In Malachi chapter 3. Malachi chapter 3. What I'm telling you is that this is still the day of mercy. And you can call upon the Lord today while he may be found. You can call upon the Lord today while the mercy of God is still available. In Malachi chapter 3, we're looking at it in verse 2. You know what those great men and the chief captains and the mighty men and the rich men, the wealthiest of men, you know what they said? Who shall be able to stand? Because it's a day 
of the wrath of God in Malachi chapter 3 verse 2 but who may be a who may, who may abide the day of his coming and who shall stand when he appeareth for he is like the refiner's fire and like the fuller's soap what's the remedy verse 16 then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another they that feared the Lord spake often one to another if you have heard about all these judgments that will come all the things that will happen at the breaking of the seals during the time of the great tribulation all those things that will happen you have heard about that and you are fearing the Lord you'll speak to other people you'll speak to your own heart my soul be wise be watchful and don't go through this great tribulation it's going to be terrible you can seek the lord today and after you are settled your account of the lord you speak to other people they spake one to another and the lord hearkened and heard it and a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the lord and that thought upon his name they shall be mine says the lord of hosts in that day when i make up my jewels and i will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him then shall you return and discern between the righteous and the wicked between him that serveth that serveth god and him that serveth him not what's the conclusion of all these things that we're saying that the sixth seal is going to be broken and that the wrath of god is going to be put on upon the earth what's the conclusion the conclusion is that you should become a real child of god saved sanctified holy righteous and pure and have nothing no skeleton in your cupboard and have every account settled because we don't know when that when the trumpet will sound when the dead in christ shall rise and when those of us who are alive shall be caught up together with they with them in the clouds what we're saying is what the scripture is saying is what the scripture is saying is this seek ye the lord while he may be found today you can find the lord you can find salvation you can find the grace of god you can find the forgiveness of the lord today seek ye the lord while he may be found call ye upon him while he's near What's the meaning of that? Let the wicked forsake his way. And the unrighteous man is thus. And let him return unto the Lord. And he will have mercy on him. He will have mercy on him. And to our God for he will abundantly pardon. Pardon is available today. Salvation is available today. The grace of God is available today. The love of God is available today. And he can cleanse all your sins away. Why don't you come to the Lord right now? Come now. And let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. If you refuse and rebel, you'll be waiting for the great tribulation. Rise up and talk to the Lord today. Don't rush out. There's nothing to rush out for. The vehicle is there. If you don't get vehicle, you sleep here. There's no problem. You want to escape the judgment of God. You want to call upon the Lord so that that day will not come upon you unaware. Seek the Lord today while he may be found. Call upon him while he's near. Let the wicked forsake his way and a righteous man is source. Let him call upon the Lord. Return unto the Lord. Forgiveness is available today. Salvation is available today. The goodness of the Lord is available today. Get saved and keep that salvation. And remember, accept your righteousness. Shall exceed the righteousness of Christ and Pharisees. Ye shall in no wise get you into the kingdom of God. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. See that this sin shall be so. What manner of men ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness so that when the Lord has come, he'll find you holy, righteous, pure, unblameable in his sight. Make sure you seek the Lord before you go be sure of the salvation of your soul don't joke with your salvation ye must be born again and you must be sanctified too